my creative side kind of got the best of me, I guess, and I really wanted to learn how to design houses, and it's kind of always been a fascination of mine. We start from residential construction, which would be houses or apartment buildings, and move all the way through a commercial construction like this college, uh, where we learn to do buildings from digging the hole, the footings, the walls, the building construction techniques, code review, code research, uh, uh, zoning ordinances, uh, accessibility standards, Americans with Disabilities Act issues. Building technology, um, learning what is a header, what's a stringer, you know, the different parts of the building. First semester and second semester is AutoCAD. AutoCAD is the primary uh, uh, software that we use for architecture, pri primarily because that's what the world is using. We start them on the boards a little bit so they can do some design work by using pencil and paper and drawing boards and so on. But as soon as they're comfortable with AutoCAD, they go on to CAD and then they, that's their new pencil. The floor plan I just finished, it took a lot of time and effort, so I had to draw it out on the paper board. So it's really satisfying when you get something done like that. Um, yeah, we're doing a commercial project right now with a library design. Now we're using a uh, new software called Revit. Uh, if you draw a floor plan, it actually makes a 3D drawing at the same time. Revit is a software that uh, makes architectural walkthroughs really quite easy. If I make a change on a floor plan, uh, let's say for instance I take a window out of the floor plan, it will remove the window from all the other drawings that the windows are on. Instantly the data is changed everywhere throughout the set of documents and, and the estimates. Uh, it'll, it'll punch out an estimate sheet on what all the parts and pieces are of the building, which it makes it really, really handy. You don't miss anything then. The environment of the classroom, it's not so much a classroom, it is a it's like a workplace for you. It's, you work at your pace and you get it done and you get it done right. It's an open, open working learning atmosphere. Almost like, an, I like to set it up like an architectural office because that's what I'm used to. I always tell them kind of uh, jokingly that I like to set the bar high here when I know they got to operate about here. It's a lot easier to gear down than it is to try to gear up if you're not ready. So we do set the bar pretty high sometimes, and it's, uh, but we know it's school. This is the place to make mistakes. Um, mistakes out in the industry cost money. Here, um, I, I, I hope you do make mistakes because you learn from them. I went to a, a four-year college last year and there was a lot of students in the class and you didn't learn the information as well. And Having a small class, if you have a problem, you just ask the teacher and will come over and help you until you get it. We have a very good reputation that precedes the students when they go into for a job interview. One of my students is in Grand Forks right now and he became an architect. He uh, came back and actually was part of the, the team that did the uh, Workforce Center remodeling, or the, the addition project in the Workforce Center here at the college, which was kind of fun to see. You're not only locked into just architecture, there's a lot of companies that want you to know how to use CAD. They are willing to teach you their discipline if you already know the software. You can get jobs working at utility companies. We have people working at mobile home manufacturing companies steel building manufacturers. They're working on all kinds of different projects from anywhere from ethanol plants which were a real real burst last year. We could, you know, they were looking for people all the time to draw those. Uh, design and architecture and uh, creative thought process are all on the cutting edge of this global uh, energy crisis and we'll be much more green, much more uh, aware of our solar collection, wind generation, green roofs, how are we going to take the water from the roofs and how are we going to reuse it? All of those things are going to be issues that we're going to have to deal with in the future and the immediate future. The creative thought that even the students have in the classroom, uh, they have some wonderful ideas and that's where, that's where all this change comes from, is ideas. I learn every year from my students something new.